Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Group Vice President, Productivity and Business Services, Jeff Rakes. Great. Good morning. Clicker. Well, it's great to have the opportunity to see you all again and share with you some of our enthusiasm for the investments and the opportunities we have in our business that we call Information Worker. Information Worker is focused in on the opportunities of productivity within information work, in particular centered around Microsoft Office. A year ago, I spoke with you about the three key pillars of our mission, how we are working to serve a broader audience. And in fact, uh, uh, this has really shaped our thinking about the productivity opportunity going forward, and I'm going to speak a little bit more about that as we, we get into the presentation. I also shared a little bit with you about how we focus in on creating new customer value through innovation, and in particular, integrated innovation. And a year ago, I emphasized how we were making investments in helping our customers realize business value. We have now, in this last year, grown a field organization that we call the Business Productivity Solutions Group that numbers nearly 400 people. We have grow dramatically grown our presence online in helping our customers realize value. In fact, each month now, about 25 million unique users come to our office online site known as Tools on the Web. We're about ready to change that, that branding. But basically, uh, we are getting a lot of people that we're connecting with broadly to help them increase the value that they get from our, our products and, and technologies. Now, of course, as people who follow our company closely from a financial standpoint, I'm sure you're interested in how is it that we are investing and what does our portfolio strategy look like. I've been in this role just about three years now, and in particular, during that period of time, we have been transitioning, some might say transforming this business around our opportunity, continuing to evolve our core assets, for example, uh, this year, the introduction of, of Office System 2003, you've already had some exposure to that through my colleagues earlier, Bill, Jim Alchin, showing some of the great things that we're doing. And then also continuing to invest in, in uh, some of the categories that we have built. Uh, for example, Microsoft Project. Our categories business, that means aside from the core Microsoft Office, now exceeds a billion dollars. And in fact, Microsoft Project uh, exceeded $500 million this year in revenue for the first time uh, in its history. So we're continuing to expand our, our opportunities, evolving our core assets and expanding our portfolio. This year, we're introducing InfoPath. One note, InfoPath is focused in on the electronic uh, forms market, in particular centered around XML. One note you saw earlier, digital note taking. We announced the acquisition of Placeware, now called Microsoft Office Live Meeting, which gets, gets us into the growing web conferencing market. And we'll also introduce our real-time communications server this year, known as Microsoft Office, the live communications server. So these are examples of how we are continuing to invest in the opportunities of information work and both evolving our core assets and expanding our portfolio. Now, one of the key things that we're doing is evolving our uh, overall approach to really transform the business. You see us moving from office as the box, as people used to think of it, to office system, our brand name for the broad range of information worker tools that we're investing in. You see us transitioning from being thought of as client applications to the combination of client, servers, and services to support and enhance information work. You see us transitioning or transforming from a focus on document-centric productivity to the combination of personal, team, and organizational productivity. And of course, we're focusing in on not just how broadly our products are licensed, but how our customers are deploying and adopting the great capabilities within. Now, as part of this transformation, one of the key things we have to do, and we'll make a significant investment in this this year, is to invest in establishing more clearly in the minds of our customers the office brand. You've seen our company put more investment into branding uh, in the last year, and we're going to ratchet that up with what we do in the office area. To give you a feel for how we think of this internally and how it will shape our messaging to the marketplace, we put together a little video that I want to show you that will help you understand that transformation. Let's go ahead and take a look. A desk, a 
chair, a window, sometimes. A computer, almost always. But there's no one thing that makes an office. It's what you do there. People do an amazing variety of work in all kinds of offices. But office work generally involves planning, deciding, collaborating, creating. And it deals with information. And that's why the other essential element for an office is Microsoft Office. So what makes the Microsoft Office system essential? Not the products within it. It's how people use it to transform information into impact. The way it enables productive teaming, streamlines process, and brings information to everyone's fingertips. This is information working millions of times a day towards millions of different ends. Microsoft Office. It's the way we help information workers and the companies they work for realize their potential. So that gives you a very good picture of how we are evaluating or how we're thinking about this transformation. But it really represents our view of the productivity opportunity. We are keenly aware that we have important competition in the marketplace, as well as a lot of opportunity to grow how we serve our customers moving forward. In terms of competition, our competition is really focused in on an attempt to clone our document-centric productivity. But what we see is the opportunity to use integrated uh, innovation as a way to provide new capabilities, really transforming from a focus in on document-centric productivity to having Office and the Office brand represent your workspace for personal, team, and organizational productivity. But we have key challenges. One of our most important challenges is making sure that people are both aware of the opportunity of how these tools and technologies can impact in a positive way what they do in, in their information work, and also making sure that they understand the value. Not just focusing only on cost, especially in a world where some of our competition is perceived as free, but understanding the value. For example, a Gartner study recently showed that as compared to competition like Star Office or Open Office, the deployment or migration within an organization uh, to, to those competitors would cost dramatically more than being able to, to move to the latest version of Microsoft Office. And of course, Microsoft Office provides much more capability to enhance information work and across all of these dimensions, personal, team, and organizational productivity. So we are very much taking on the challenge of helping our customers understand that their perception about the competition is that those competitors aren't good enough for information work, that in fact they are not cheaper than Office when they think about the total value equation. So that's our focus. Our focus is in on helping people understand this, this opportunity so that they see that, in fact, no, the software they're using today won't be the same in 10 years. We are continuing to grow the opportunity of information work in the same way that it's grown in the last 10 years. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drill down on each of these areas. I'm going to first start out with empowering productivity in people because that has been the heart of our business for the last two decades. Yet at the same time, the world has changed dramatically. If you look at work styles, people are much more mobile. All of you are the best examples of that. You're move using multiple devices. You want information across those devices. You want easy access to the information you need when you need it. There are digital processes that are empowering productivity in analog processes like note, like note taking or paper forms that have not previously been impacted. So great opportunity in that area. And of course, there's a big focus in on efficacy. People feel overwhelmed by information, yet they know that they need to be connected. They need to be able to get to the information they need. They want more control. So you see with Outlook 2003, a lot of the work that we've done is to help people be more in control of their own information flow, improvements in spam control, improvements in the way in which they can use their inbox to flag or, or set up the tasks that they, they need to, to uh, uh, undertake. And finally, we're going to continue to invest dramatically in online community because we think one of the key ways to provide great value to our customers as well as to uh, compete very successfully 
uh, in the marketplace against uh, some of the new type of competition is to deepen the experience for our customers. So by using our broad community of people who are using Office as a way to understand how they work and improving that work. So if you're a financial professional and you come to Office Online, we help you understand the scenarios where we can most effectively impact how you do information work. Tips, tricks, training, templates, content. So that's a big part of our investment in online community. Now today what I wanted to do was to go ahead and give you a sense of uh, some of the examples. And I wanted to put them into the financial context. So if we go ahead and bring up the screen here, I'm going to start out with a brief demo of personal uh, productivity. Uh, do you want to go ahead and, and switch? There we go. And this is something I'm sure you see quite commonly at 10Q. But one of the things that I think is very important to understand is the significant impact that XML will have on productivity within this kind of a, a, a scenario. The magic of XML, and in particular uh, schema, extensible business reporting language, or XBRL, is becoming common now and soon will be, I think, a standard, de facto standard within the financial community. And so what you see here is a, a, a document. And we'll go ahead and we're going to just scroll through the document. You see the kinds of classic information. I want to point your eyes over here to the right-hand side. This is an example of how Office System 2003 becomes programmable. That is a, a document action task pane. Effectively, that is a programmable task pane that can be set up for given solutions within an organization. And in fact, what's represented here is an easy to understand um, uh, taxonomy of XBRL. So for example, I can go ahead and show you the tags that have been uh, assigned by somebody as a part of using XBRL with this document. So we can go ahead and see uh, you know, various elements. Now, just to give you a sense of what's underneath, um, and we don't recommend this for the novice users, I'll go ahead and show you that XBRL schema. And that appears right here uh, in the, the, the task pane. And you can see how what we are doing is using XML to bring structure to unstructured information, which will be very important in terms of improving the overall business analysis and access to business information within organizations. That kind of approach leads to Office becoming the front end for business information systems and business process systems within organizations. So it's a great example of this, this transformation. So let's go ahead and, and go back now. And I want to continue on on this transformation next by speaking of what's going on in team productivity. Team productivity is really being shaped by a couple of important trends. One is the adoption of the web. Web technologies are becoming the infrastructure for collaboration, sharing, and working together. And another important trend, one that I think is absolutely critical to spurring team productivity, knowledge management, is the fact that this is user driven. The kind of technologies that we're developing, in particular Windows SharePoint services, provides people throughout an organization the ability to set up collaboration without having to call upon the IT department to do it. A very powerful example is that inside our own company, we now have 25,000 Windows SharePoint services sites. Those were not provisioned by our IT department. They were provisioned by the people who used them. And 4,000 of those are document workspaces, and another 2,500 of those are meeting workspaces. What is, that? What, is that? what is a workspace, or what does that mean? It means that if I'm going to share a document, it's very common that people will email that around. But then you have six or seven or however many people uh, you emailed it to, you have that number of copies. And it gets very difficult to keep up to, to, to date on what's the latest copy and trying to merge all of that together. I'm sure many of you have gone through that. What we can do with Office System 2003 and Windows SharePoint Services showing that integrated innovation is when you go to send around a document, you can make it a document workspace. And that then brings people into that kind of, of team productivity. And it doesn't cost any additional money for the IT people to manage the infrastructure. In fact, in our own company, it is exactly one full-time person who handles all of our Windows SharePoint sites across the company. It's on about 10, 12 servers. 
One person is able to manage that, and that means that kind of team productivity is available with very minimal cost uh, to the company. In fact, in most cases, we found it's lower cost than managing the traditional file and print sharing uh, servers. So Windows SharePoint Services becomes a foundation for all that we're doing in collaboration. Then on top of that, we build in SharePoint portal capabilities, Microsoft Project Server, the real-time communication server capabilities, Microsoft Exchange connects in with Windows SharePoint Services. So that's a great example of how integrated innovation is making a difference in overall productivity. In addition, <clears throat> excuse me, in addition, we're working on how we can improve security. That's a very big issue in flow of information work. So with our Windows rights management technology, we can set permissions uh, on documents, or you as a user can set permissions. We integrate the notion of presence, so you can see if the colleagues that you're working with are online. So these are all great examples of what we are doing to use integrated innovation in team productivity. What I want to do now is go ahead and switch back uh, to the, the demo screen. And I'm going to show you what team productivity is like in a financial context inside our own company. Here we have an email that's come in. And I believe this is a cost control statement. So instead of uh, opening up the Excel spreadsheet, which I could certainly do, what I'm going to do is go to the document workspace. And when this document was sent around, that was the method uh, that was given to everybody. This workspace was automatically provisioned. And here you see all of the core elements that people are, are need in order to work together on this document. We see all of the relevant shared documents. We see all of the people who have received the document and their presence information. For example, Kelly, one of my colleagues who's, who's working on the document. We see the task information. This is team task information so that everybody can view it. Now what I'm going to do is going to, I'm going to go ahead and open up this uh, cost control statement and show you that when I go to the document workspace, I open up the document, what I can do is um, you know, take a look at the, the information associated with the document. So here, for example, I see in the shared workspace pane while I'm working with Microsoft Excel, I can see that there are permissions set on this document. This, in a financial context, is so much more effective than where we were. Typically, in our environment, what we would do is send the Excel spreadsheet around, and we'd send it around with the password. But then everybody had the password to be able to send it around to others if they want. In this case, we use our digital rights management technology to set permissions. So on this particular document, uh, I have the permission to view it, but I'm not allowed to edit it, copy it, print it, save it, uh, or access it programmability. Now, there's a rich set of, of opportunities. I, if I am the creator of this document, I can set these parameters to the, the team um, that I want to send it to. So there's a great example of using the advances in Windows uh, rights management technology to improve the information worker process. Also, by integrating presence, I can see all of the folks that are online, as well as those people who might, might not now be online. And so if I need some uh, information from Kelly, uh, I can go and, and immediately instant message him in order to be able to get an update on something related to the, uh, the, the work that I'm doing. I also have the ability to see the tasks. I want you to look very closely, because as I click on this pane, it actually goes out to the server and gets the latest set of task information that I need to be working on. I can go to the shared documents. And this is all within the context of my work. So you can see the tight integration between Office System 2003 tools and our collaboration point, Windows SharePoint Services. And uh, I also got my response back from Kelly. Now, another great example of integrated innovation is the way in which we can go in and use web services. In this particular case, I'm going to do a lookup, which calls on SharePoint Portal Server to look up our people policy information. Now, this is very common in any financial environment. What you'll want to do is to have a set of policy statements related to, um, uh, related to how you do the, the, or what's the policy for people, for expenses, so on and so forth. And what it'll do is it'll go out and it'll search across the, 
the, uh, the web. I'm going to go ahead here, and in particular, I'm going to focus in on the, uh, the oops, I kicked the wrong arrow. I'm going to go ahead and focus in on the finance uh, information, and I can bring up policy statements from the, po uh, the finance group as a way to be able to test uh, whether I am properly doing the cost control statement. So those are great examples of how what we can do is bring together team productivity within the context of Office System 2003 with Windows SharePoint services. So let's go ahead and switch back to the slides. I want to take this to the next level, organizational productivity. A key thing that I would emphasize here is how Office is becoming integrated in with business systems and business processes. CIOs are under tremendous pressure. They're trying to figure out how to do more with less. And by thinking of Office as an extension of their development platform, they're able to move forward in terms of uh, their, their key business initiatives and actually save money in the development process and provide a richer experience uh, to the people within their organization. Portals is a key topic for most of our customers right now. SharePoint Portal embodies what we're doing for the information worker area, but it connects in with our broader set of portal technologies, which would include content management server, uh, things that we do with, with commerce server, so that a customer can build a very rich uh, portal solution and much more uh, cost effectively than the competition. Connection with business processes, use of XML web services. These are opportunities to bring the integration into the organization. And again, we'll go ahead and, and take a look at some of the things that we're doing uh, in that regard. Let's we'll switch back to the, uh, the demo machine. And as we do that, I'm going to bring up a, a classic uh, example within our own financial organization. This is a pivot table. And this particular pivot table is uh, within Excel. It's a way to view some of the key information uh, regarding the cost control statement. Now here I have a particular uh, line item, depreciation expense, and I'm not really sure about the details. Well, by integrating in very simply into Excel, our finance department has a set of actions which are in the context of what we need to do relative to our internal orders. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and get the details on the internal order system. And here you see that um, I can see the person in charge relative to this particular element of our finance department. What I've done here is I've actually gone from Excel directly to our SAP system. Uh, it uh, uses a, a set of, of technologies that we have built to uh, open up our SAP system to web services. Uh, we call that Calypso. But it means that it's very easy for me, right from within Excel, to have access to our SAP system and get the information that's relevant. So I think that gives you a good sense of, of how we are, are making sure that uh, people have the opportunity to use Office as a front end into systems. But we also want people to have the opportunity to use Office as part of business processes. Here we have a, a set of people within uh, uh, cost centers. And let's say I'm involved in uh, activities for people moves. Again, now the context is in FinWeb, or our financial web, are the things that are most relevant to uh, work locations or people details. So I can go ahead and select Change Work Location. And now it's contacting a web service that allows me to go in right from uh, Microsoft Excel and change the building number. And uh, now I have initiated our SAP activity for moving, for moving this person from one uh, part of the, the company to another, another and uh, the request number is issued immediately. So this is a great example of how Office is transforming to support organizational productivity, connecting to business information and to, to business processes. So again, let's flip back to uh, the slides. And I want to show you some other examples of how we are using our technologies uh, internally. We have switched Microsoft Web, our primary employee portal, over to SharePoint Portal Server 2.0. We haven't released SharePoint Portal Server uh, yet. That will come as part of the Office System 2003 launch. But already, we're using these technologies internally for our 50,000 plus employees. 
Here you see the, uh, the move to my, uh, the Microsoft web screen that our employees are seeing. Plus, in addition, because of the personalization capability in SharePoint Portal, every one of our employees has their own site that is an extension of SharePoint uh, Portal servers. So that way, people can have access to contact information, to shared documents, shared links. Uh, it's an easy way to make it possible for people to contact you or have access to key information that you wish to share within the organization. Here's another example, a little bit hard to read uh, probably in the back, but this uses InfoPath. InfoPath is our uh, new application as a part of Office Professional that allows you to do electronic forms that are centered around XML. We are using this throughout our sales uh, and account management uh, um, processes. In this particular case, uh, the example is our customer and, our, and partner experience focus. That's one of the things that uh, you've seen Steve talk about is an increasing area of focus uh, for the company. We have a significant effort to focus our marketing activities around a set of solutions or go-to-markets. Here we have moved all of that activity in the field organization tracking it to Microsoft Project. So this is an example of where we're using project as part of those elements of information work. So each of these are good examples of how technologies that we're developing in the information worker group in conjunction with other parts of the company are really shaping the future of information work. And we really are investing in the long term. One of the things that I hope you're somewhat aware of is our investment in Watson technology. For the last 15, 20 years, there have been lots of debates about what would really improve reliability of software. We think we have found the best example, the thing that will do more to impact reliability than anything that's been done in the last 20 years. And that's this technology called Watson. Sometimes you get a little error message up on the screen. We feel bad when you get that message. Maybe it says that it, the software crashed. But we ask you if you'll send us an error report. We take all of the information from those error reports, and what that does is it helps focus our development effort on fixing the things that most significantly impact user experience. So now what we're doing is we are dramatically improving our ability to connect with people using the, the, the beauty of the internet with our Watson technology to improve the reliability of our software much quicker, much faster than any of our competitors are doing. And we can now apply that concept more broadly. For example, in Office System 2003, we have Content Watson. When you need help on a given topic, the first thing we do is take you to our online experience. Why? Because it's most likely that that will be the best, most up-to-date help, where we actually get your feedback on whether the information has been helpful or not. And if not, you can tell us what it is that we can do to improve that information. So we're applying that Watson concept to continuously improve our, our, our content in conjunction with Office Online. We're taking a very long-term view for productivity. We're looking at how productivity broadly affects business, uh, or how information work productivity broadly affects business productivity. In this council, we have assembled a set of companies uh, within our industry, companies like Cisco and Intel and IBM, as well as academics who are leaders in evaluating business productivity, as well as companies uh, who are the end customers of these technologies. And we are looking at how we can better help people judge the investment that they make in information worker productivity, what that will do for their businesses, and what are the best practices to get the most out of uh, the investment in those tools. Right here in this briefing center, uh, uh, next month we will open up the second phase of our Center for Information Work, which is how we show our customers the next generation of information worker tools and what they can do to take advantage of them. In one year, we just opened one year ago, about the time of this analyst uh, meeting, and in one year this has become the second most popular activity or, or request from our customers when they visit Microsoft. The number one being uh, a visit with a Microsoft executive. I'm not sure we'll ever get to number one, but we're right there where I'd want to be in the top two of requests. That means our customers are intensely interested in the future of information work and how that's going to have an impact on what they do. 
and we continue to invest in how the information worker tools will evolve and take advantage of great innovations. You've seen that with the tablet PC. Also, Jim showed Athens, and there's a great example of what the workstation environment will be for information work in the future. So we're very much investing in the long term of this opportunity for information work because we think that there's great, uh, great opportunities ahead to serve a broader customer audience, creating great value through integrated innovation, and helping our customers realize business value. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Orlando Ayala. I have had the opportunity to uh, work on our Microsoft Business Solutions business with Doug Burgum and also how we broadly sell the broad Microsoft product line to small and medium businesses. We think this is such a big opportunity for our company during this decade that Orlando chose to take on the great challenge, the great opportunity of advancing how we reach the millions and millions of small and medium businesses out there, not only for Microsoft Business Solutions, but also uh, for all of our products in the small and medium business area. So I hope you join me uh, in welcoming Orlando Ayala. Thank you.